further debate. Further debate. Recognize the member from Thornhill. Thank you very much, and I'm very pleased to rise today to speak about this bill on payday loans. Uh, I believe it's 156. I have it marked here. Hang on one second. It is. Uh, how's that for memory at the no, end of the day? On th- it is 156. Why doesn't it say clearly here? An act to amend the Consumer Protection Act, the Collection and Debt Settlement Services Act, and Payday Loans Act. Well, we held a very interesting meeting in our caucus boardroom with um, some of the um, um, investors and owners of payday loan establishments. And it is unfortunate when you hear that people have to get a loan of any kind uh, for a family emergency, whether it's at a bank or whether it's um, from a payday uh, loan agency or a credit union. The key difference is that most often banks and trust companies are dealing with people who are getting loans based on co- equitable. They have ec- equity and based on th- using that for collateral. So they're getting loans. It's almost like an investment, Madam Speaker, when they get those loans because they're using their equity, maybe their equity from their home or property that they own, but they're using that equity to get some cash flow so that sometimes they can do improvements, um, which can be an investment, or invest in a business. This is a big stretch from that. This is the opposite end of the spectrum. Spectrum. The people who have to avail themselves of payday loan establishments are people who don't have equity to take to a bank. They don't have a rainy day fund, and they're um, they are stressed. And I think that we have to sort of look at the broad picture and realize how this type of stress that people are living day to day under wondering when they open each bill that they're afraid to open their bills. They avoid opening their bills, which sometimes makes it even worse because then there's interest payments or uh, reactivation fees. But they're living under such incredible stress that it makes people um, turn to uh, abuse of alcohol or drugs. It makes people, can make people violent. It can affect their children and um, their other family members. It can per- affect their job performance at work, and it, it can affect their health as well. So it is very important for us to um, make sure that people are able to access what I call microloans. That's what these are. These are microloans, Madam Speaker. They're small loans that are only meant to be for two weeks. They're meant for family or personal emergencies. And as we're hearing from some of the members from rural ridings, people rely on their cars in those rural ridings. They have no other choice. You cannot walk to a store to buy a few groceries for your children if you're in those kind of uh, communities. And so their car has an unexpected flat tire. And a lot of times you can imagine how stressful that is. They, um, uh, you know, they are well aware that some construction project is going on near them and they got a nail in their tire and they uh, probably rightly slow. So blame that construction project for their bad luck and now all of a sudden they need to get two tires um, for their vehicle. So we want people to be able to have that financial literacy, I would call it, and to understand how important it is to save in good times so that hopefully you don't need to rely on some kind of microloan or a payday loan uh, situation. Well, we can't talk the talk unless we walk the talk, walk, Madam Speaker. We're here borrowing in the province of Ontario over $11 billion a year to pay interest on our debt. And it's sort of, it, I wish it was laughable. I wish I could laugh and, and they say it was funny that we are hearing um, from members in the, in the legislature and members in our community who somehow look down on people who borrow to make ends meet. Well, we're doing the exact same thing, and I'm not blaming just this government. Other governments across uh, Canada, across the world, municipalities are in debt. I'm in York Region, and I think the debt now has passed uh, over $3 billion uh, of debt. Maybe the member from Newmarket Aurora can vouch for me that York Region administration is in debt. Many of the cities in York Region are in debt. So that means that the individuals living in those cities are in debt, in debt, living in, in, in a really 
scary situation for, for people who sit down and think of it. Fortunately, most people uh, don't take the time to think of it. But they, they, they owe, because collectively, as a society, we all owe on those debts. Um, I remember during my last campaign, a very clever guy, I still can picture him, he said he was in a rented house, he was an electrician, his name was Mike, and it sort of reminds me of uh, when Obama campaigned and there was a Joe the Plumber or somebody that went around and uh, we wondered if it was a setup. But this is a true story, Madam Speaker. And he said to me when I said, spoke to him about government debt, and it's uh, a reason why I'm a financial uh, conservative, I consider myself um, uh, a fairly progressive conservative, but I am financially conservative, and that debt bothers me, and it's something I've always thought about, um, governments and debt. And he said to me, well, I don't own my house, and I'll just move to Alberta, because in that time, things were still pretty good in Alberta, and he figured he'll just pack up his family and get in his truck, and he's an electrician, and he can get a job in Alberta, and he was probably thinking about it at the time, and maybe his wife didn't want to move, and maybe that's, that, that was a struggle they were going through at that time. But that's the mentality, is that people don't have equity, they don't own their house, they don't own their business, well, they own their skills, and they own you know, uh, the shirt on their back and maybe their equipment if they're an electrician, but people don't have that equity and it makes them very transferable. So we see people who will move to another province because there's a better program for some kind of social services or disability. We heard this morning during question period somebody spoke about autism therapy, that they are concerned that autism therapy will not be available for their child and they will look at other provinces and consider moving to other provinces. So if our debt is starting to affect the level of services, which I believe it is already, many people might have to consider moving to another province. That's a problem, Madam Speaker. That's not fair to Manitoba, who might be managing their books very well, to have all the families with autism or certain health problems all of a sudden move to their province. That means that we as legislators, legislators are not doing our job here at Queen's Park. So the people who go to payday loans, they're at, they're at a very low point. And I think that they need to have access to payday loan institutions. I'm not speaking against the loan institutions. I'm speaking against people being forced to live hand to mouth even with a good paying job often, if their electricity rates are skyrocketing, if they're have to, having to pay for autism therapy for their child, I would wonder how many people are in debt in the province of Ontario because they're having to access services that really the government should be providing, but they're on a wait list. And I'd say kudos to those people who are willing to use their home equity and to invest in their children and to invest in their own health and to ensure that they are not going to be left behind. I think that it really comes down, and we've heard a lot of people speak about education, financial literacy, financial education, and I have to say I still remember uh, being in about grade 10, and we had you know, home economics for a couple of months and different types of courses like that that many of the high schools don't have anymore. And one of the courses we had to balance, we had to learn how to write a check, which I had not done until then. We had to learn how to write a check, we had to learn how to reconcile our bank statement, and we learned about uh, credit cards and interest and compounded interest and what it all meant and I actually found it very interesting um, at the time and I remember I, I, I did very, very well in the exam except I lost marks uh, because um, I didn't spell check with a Q-U-E, I spelt it C-K. And to this day, I have to tell people here that um, whenever I see somebody write the word check when they mean to write a check to the bank with a C-K, I am outraged because I say, I lost marks for that and you should lose marks for that as well. So I think that um, all of us here understand, we understand what compounded interest is. We understand that payday loans are meant as these micro loans for two weeks without compounded interest. And yes, it might sound like you know, a very small amount, $21 on $100, but that's 21%. So I think that that sort of financial literacy um, 
it's our job to ensure that the schools are teaching it, but we also understand that there are many people who are intellectually challenged in our community who may be developing dementia and their family members and friends have, don't even realize it yet. They're taking out loans that really they shouldn't be, and that's the big challenge for us uh, here in the province because you want people to have their privacy and autonomy, but then there can be problems associated with that. Thank you very much. Well, Questions and comments? I recognize